Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about asynchronous counter. So I am going to explain two different types of asynchronous counters. One is two-bit ripple up counter, another one is two-bit ripple down counter. Here ripple is nothing but asynchronous counter, also known as ripple counter. Asynchronous counter. Asynchronous counter, also known as ripple counter okay that's why it is given as a ripple up counter and ripple down counter so two bit ripple up counter two bit up counter two bit up counter means it is having two bits zero zero like q1 q0 you can start initially from zero zero when first clock pulse occurred when first clock pulse occurred, the count will be incremented by 1 so that 0, 1. And when second clock pulse occurred, 1, 0. And when third clock pulse occurred, 1, 1. When fourth clock pulse occurred, 0, 0. So from initial state to when up to where up to where it is incremented 0 to 3. Nothing but 4 clock pulses totally it is counted for clock pulses okay the, this all happens and this all increment is happening when the negative edge of the clock occurs so before going to that let me first explain what do you mean by positive edge and what do you mean by negative edge of the clock signal so clock signal we already know very well clock signal is nothing but train of rectangular pulses so this clock signal is having two edges. So suppose if you are saying a pause to edge triggered uh, clock pulse is given. So pause to edge triggered means generally when we are saying flip flops, always we should focus on the edges, not on the levels. If we concentrate on the levels, then it becomes latch. Okay, as we are talking about flip flops, counters and counters, all counters are made up of uh, flip flops only. So flip flops. This particular pause to edge triggered flip flop is having this pause to cycle that is nothing but a 0 to 1 increment and again 0 to 1 rise again for this 0 to 1 rise. Uh, only at this particular state we will be having the state change or increment and coming to negative edge. Negative edge triggered if I say negative edge triggered counter or clock signal then the same clock signal we are applying to that flip flop set also but here the changes are occurred whenever the negative edge occurs negative edge is nothing but falling edge falling edge from 1 to 0 this is a falling edge this is a falling edge again if you have here this is a falling edge all these are falling edges all these are rising edges okay what type of edge given here negative edge negative edge means the changes occur when a negative going edge occurs that means from 1 to 0 transition 1 to 0 transition okay so now let us see the uh, circuit diagram logic diagram of this particular ripple up counter see in a synchronous counter i already told you in the previous video in a synchronous counter the output of first clock signal is given as input clock signal input to the second flip flop and if again third flip flop is there again q2 will be given to the clock signal for the next flip flop like this the process will be repeated see <laughs> i already told you one more point jk flip flops are d flip flops are preferred for the counters design so if we are using jk flip flop then jk must be short circuited and given to logic one see here <coughs> In both the flip flops, the same situation is there, and here the clock signal is given with a negative edge, so that is a negative edge triggered clock signal, and the output of first flip flop is given as the input clock signal for the second flip flop. Okay, so now this is the clock signal we are having. This clock signal has the falling edges here, 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 and here. Okay, now initially, one more important point, initially counters, all counters are cleared. 
initially all the counters are nothing but all the flip flops are cleared means all the outputs are zero so, so that's why q1 is equal to zero q2 is equal to zero q1 equal to zero q2 equal to zero now whenever the first falling edge of the clock occurs see falling edge of the clock here we are giving the falling edge then because of this falling edge this falling edge what happens this flip flop comes into active state active state until this particular flip flop is in off state deactivate state when the falling edge occurs automatically it comes into active state so active state means when jk is connected to one means toggle state so output previously if it is zero then the output should be one if it is one then the output should be zero but previously it is zero see q1 i am talking about previously it is zero now it is having rising falling uh, rising nothing but one so zero to one transition occurs in the jk flip flop when the input is one when this clock signal has a negative edge again for one more negative edge the transition changes from one to zero again zero to one so that means every time the output changes as one zero one zero one zero nothing but toggling state because j and k are connected to one nothing but we can say it is a flip t flip flop it is a t flip flop okay t flip flop with t is equal to one nothing but toggle flip flop and coming to q2 q2 is having the second flip flop is having the clock signal which is the output of the first flip flop so now you can take the first signal output q1 first signal output q1 as input for the next clock pulse so it is next signal output so this is the clock signal for the q2 generation now we need to identify where we are having the negative edges of on this particular waveform so that there we will be having the change in the output see at this particular point we will be having a negative edge so until that particular point the q2 output is zero because it is initially cleared and when the negative edge occurs in the q1 automatically state changes from zero to one again for one more negative edge it is changing from one to zero like this it will continue okay if you observe the changes in the q1 and q2 so see here q2 q1 initially zero zero here initially zero zero and next zero one for the next clock pulse see this is the period of the clock signal again this is another period this is another period this is another period this is another period nothing but one more clock pulse so this is first clock pulse second third fourth fifth and so on see zero 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 one one zero one one so one zero one one okay this is for first clock pulse this is second clock pulse this is third clock pulse and this is fourth clock pulse see fourth clock pulse will be having one one when this state reached one one automatically that goes to zero zero again this particular state comes here okay so this particular counter so the this counter counts from 0 0 to 0 1 1 0 1 1 so the counter counts from 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 nothing but totally four clock pulses four clock, clock pulses are to be counted okay that's why it is ripple carry uh, ripple ripple up counter now coming to ripple down counter ripple down counter is nothing but it counts in reverse order so previously uh, initially all the flip flops are cleared initially all flip flops are cleared so all flip flops are cleared means we will be having 0 0 q2 q1 will be having 0 0 so when clock again here also negative edge nothing but falling edge falling edge occurs so when clock falling edge occurs what happens it changes to 
one one and then one zero and then zero one and then zero zero again it goes to one one so like this it will also count four clock pulses but in reverse order it also counts four clock pulses but in reverse order okay so how to do the connection now see the connection is very simple previously the output of q1 the output q1 first flip flop is connected as the input clock for the second flip flop but now instead of taking q1 as it is a negative edge triggered and uh, down increment the q1 bar is connected as a clock input for the second flip flop instead of q1 now just shifted to q1 bar that's it only this particular change will give you the decremental count so we will see how it is so remaining all are same see this is the clock signal clock signal is having first clock pulse this one second third and fourth see q q1 is given here q1 is having the change for every occurrence of a falling edge of the clock signal so when the falling edge occurs it changes a state transition from 0 to 1 again for the second clock pulse 1 to 0 third clock pulse 0 to 1 because the inputs of the jk are connected to 1 so for every new clock pulse the output toggles okay q1 is fine and coming to q1 bar as the clock signal is connected clock for the second flip flop is connected as the q1 bar signal so we have taken q1 bar also here so this is complement of the q1 and next wherever the negative edge occurs in this q1 bar automatically the flip flop 2 will toggle the q to q2 so previously it is cleared so 0 and now for this transition it changes from 0 to 1 again for this uh, negative edge it changes from 1 to 0 again for this it changes from 0 to 1 and so on now see these two signals q1 and q2 because we don't need q1 bar in the output expression we need only q2 and q1 q1 bar is just acting as the clock signal for the second flip flop okay now q2 0 again 0 <coughs> q2 is 1 and q1 is 1 so 1 1 next q2 is 1 it is 0 and q2 is 0 it is 1 again 0 0 so how many clock pulses counted here this is first one this is second one and this one is third this is fourth after fourth clock pulse what happens again the state is coming to the original state 0 0 here 0 0 so to move from this place to this place totally it needs four clock pulses four clock pulses counting wise both the operations are same but but the uh, counting is in reverse order previously it was like 0001 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in reverse order but here it is in descending order okay this is what asynchronous counter with the two bit ripple up counter and as well as down counter Thank you.